Okay, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. All praises and glories due to Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, Bashem Rakakwadash, for giving us this knowledge, this truth, this understanding, especially in the times that we are living in. So, yeah, I, I wanted to say a few words to this uh, character here, Raphael Israel. Now, I'm um, El Apostol, I mentioned him a couple of times in his latest videos. And uh, he uh, basically, he's like a, uh, he's like a, a straw in the wind, so to speak. He's tossed to and fro. And one of the problems that he may not be aware of is the fact that he called himself the Ronin. Let me show you right here. This is the guy right here. He goes by the name of Rapha Raphael Israel, the Ronin Refined. The Ronin Refined. Well, that's your problem right there. You're a Ronin. I don't know if you ever looked up the word Ronin, the term Ronin. Now, I remember there was a movie uh, that came out with uh, Robert De Niro and this French actor, I forgot the guy's name. Uh, they did a movie called The Ronin. And I remember at the beginning of the movie, they put the uh, definition of the term Ronin. And uh, a Ronin is a masterless samurai. Like, let me show you. If we type in the word Ronin, as I have here. Ronin. Turn this up a little. Ronin. Okay, Ronin. In feudal Japan, a wandering... <laughs> that don't sound too good right away. A wandering <clears throat> samurai. Now, samurai, or as the Japanese pronounce it, I think they pronounce it samurai, samurai. I believe the word means servant, samurai, right? So basically a wandering servant because a samurai, his job was to serve his lord or his master, to protect his lord or his master, right? So in feudal Japan, a wandering samurai who had no lord or master. So there's your problem right there, man. That's why you're not coming up right in the spirit. When you come into this thing of ours, it's very important to have a good master. Now, let me give you an example. When I came into this truth, I was under, I was under uh, this guy, uh, General Johanna. And uh, my spirit really didn't sit right with him. I didn't feel I was really learning in this truth because I came into the truth I wanted to learn I had a desire to learn so Yahweh Barshim Yahshai blessed me in uh, meeting Elder Apostle Taha back then he was High Priest Taha and I came up under his, under his teachings under his tutorance so he was my master and still is he still is my master even though I have a heavenly master which is Yahweh Shai Yahweh Barshim Yahweh Shai I also have an earthly master. Okay, this is a man that I came up under. I am for, say what you want to, I am for Edda, forever, not Edda, forever in debt to this man because this man, I'm talking about Elder Pastor, he taught me what I know. And of course, I went on to learn other things that helped enhance my, uh, uh, my servitude in this truth. But this is the man that taught me, Elder Pastor. This is the man that became my master. Okay? And um, let me show you that, uh, uh, you know, um, your teacher that teaches you in this truth is your master. Okay? This is the book of Ephesians 6. 
and 5. It says, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. So we have a master according to the spirit. That's Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> He's in the heavens. He's also our intercessor because he makes the, the word intercessor. When you look it up, it's a go between. So Yahweh Shai goes on behalf of us. Yahweh Shai goes before the father and makes intercession for us. Okay. There's a scripture that clearly tells you that he's the go between, but you also have a master according to the flesh. Who is that? That's the one who taught you. That's the one you, you, your, your tutor. Another word for master is your tutor. This is the guy that Yahweh Bashim Yahshai set up to teach you, to bring you up in the truth, to bring you up, to rear you up in the faith. Okay? <clears throat> bring you up, grow you up, rear you up. Okay? So he would be your master in the flesh. Okay? And clearly you see it here. Uh, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters. <laughs> sound like like that guy Lahab we're your masters okay well that's scriptural okay be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh now let's look up this word masters so it's scriptural okay he's not my master only I only have one master that's the Howard Shai you're going off man the one who taught you your tutor is your master okay even in England, right, um, the teachers, they're sometimes called masters. You know, Master Jones. Ma if you ever watch them old English type flicks, and there might be a, a scene where they're in a school or maybe a college, you'll hear one of the students say to the teacher, Master, Master. That was a, that was a title, okay, a title of reverence, Master, okay, and you're the student. Right? So here's the Greek. Strong's G 2962. Kurios. Kurios. Right. Kurios. And it says, uh, we're just going to bounce around here to, to get the understanding of the word. Uh, he to whom a person or thing belongs, about which he has power of deciding, master, lord. And it is what it is. When you first come into this truth, you are indebted to your master, your teacher, your tutor. That's how it is, man. Okay? Um, the owner, one who has control of the person, the master. And the master knows that he's not he's not gonna um, control you in a in a in a in a wrong way because he'd he'd have to deal with the heavenly master which is Yahweh Shai, okay? If he's a true master, all right? He's not going to control you in a wrong way. All right, um, let's read on. It says, is a title of honor. See? Master is a title of honor, expressive of respect. And that's a lost art in Israel, man. That is truly a lost art. And it takes a real man to respect another man, okay? It takes a real man. That's a manly trait. Respect, you know, honor, respect. Okay, th th those things are very rare in Israel. You know, uh, one of the reasons is because most of these men, most of us been raised, and me included, to a certain extent, been raised by our, mo our mothers. So we never really learned how to be real men. Now, showing respect and honor is a manly thing. That's manly. Okay, putting aside our feelings, our emotional feelings, emotional, that's women, all right? Men are supposed to be, really a real man is supposed to be a stoic. Look that word up, a stoic, okay? So, again, honor and respect, uh, um, they are traits of men, manhood, okay? So, the title of master is a title of honor expressive of respect and reverence with with which servants greet their master and like i told you you got these old english flicks uh where the student if there's a scene in a college or a school 
The student will call the teacher master. And then you have the headmaster. I remember this gr growing up. Okay, growing up, uh, I spent a little time in the islands. I actually went to school there, uh, you know, uh, when I was a little boy. And the, the leader of the, the school, he was called the headmaster. The headmaster. Okay, so there you go. All right. Uh, this title is given to God, the Messiah. Well, Yahweh Shai is the chief master. He's our heavenly master, but we do have earthly masters. And the scripture proves it. Let's get back to it. Ephesians 6 and 5, servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of heart as unto as unto Yahweh Shai, who is our heavenly master. Not with eye service as men pleases, but as the servants of Yahweh Shai doing the will of Yahweh from the heart. With good with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Right. And this is a good master, if you have a good master. Okay? Let's keep reading. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth. Now, when I first came in the truth, um, when I first came in the truth, General Johanna was my master. He was my master because I came up under him until my spirit really didn't sit right with him because I really wasn't learning anything. I wanted to learn. And he really, to be honest, he really wasn't all about the work. He was always into some money-making adventure. He's always into some money-making scheme. And he was barely at the camp. So what happened was I had set up a meeting between him and Elder Pastor. And in, and between them both, I asked uh, General Johanna, I, I asked him, can I join Elder Pastor's camp? And he said, yes. So I was released from one master. Okay, I was released from one master, General Johanna, and given to another master. <laughs> Even the phone had to chime on that. And given to another master. So in, in, in actuality, I was emancipated. I was taken from one master to another master. And that was all by the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. I really had nothing to do with it. You know, there's, there's such a thing called predestination. Everything in this thing of ours is predestinated. Okay? So... It pleaseth the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, for me to be with Elder Pastor, to come up underneath him, to, to help, help him in the ministry. Just like the Apostle Paul had men back then that helped him in the ministry. The Apostle Paul had Timothy, he had Titus, he had um, Epaphroditus, he had, uh, for, for, for a good while, he had Barnabas until they, was, they split over Mark. Okay, Mark was another one he had. Because there's in the history it said towards the latter part of the ministry, Mark reconciled with um, with uh, uh, Paul, Apostle Paul. Okay, I remember reading that in the his, in the history. Okay, so let me say it again. Uh, General Johanna was my first master when I first came in the truth. He was my first master, but then Elder Pastor ended up being my second master. Okay. All right, and that's the truth. So Ephesians 6 and 9, and ye masters, so now uh, it's, it's speaking to the masters now. These are the, 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 the teachers in the truth, right? And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. You, you, right? You, you hear that? Knowing that your master also is in heaven. Who is that? Yahweh Shai, the heavenly master. The master of masters. <laughs> and even Yahweh Shai has a master. His father, Yahweh. You, you can read the divine order in 1 Corinthians the 11th chapter. Right? Is it 1 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians the 11th chapter, I believe it is. Yeah, 1 Corinthians the 11th chapter. Knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. So there you go. Let me bring out another scripture that I saw earlier. I think it's somewhere in Colossians. 
Yeah, so we read Ephesians 6 and 9, right? We read Ephesians 6. Let's go to Colossians, the fourth chapter, the first verse. Again, it says, these are the words of the Apostle Paul. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Now, who's that? Yahweh Shai. So the point is clear. You have masters. So this guy here, he calls himself the Ronin, refined. <laughs> you should change that name, my man. Stop calling yourself the Ronin, because what is a Ronin? A Ronin is one without a master. This is a wanderer. All right? You're, you're a samurai. Samurai means servant, but you're a samurai who has no lord or master. You're a wandering samurai. Okay? You call yourself Ronin, and you're wandering from group to group. The scriptures speak about that. Children tossed to and fro. Let's get that. So your problem starts with your name. That's why the scripture have said, what does the scripture say about a good name? That's why you guys, you got to watch what you, what kind of name you put on yourself, man. All starts with the name, man. Here it is right here. The book of Ecclesiastes 7 and 1. A good name is better than precious ointment <laughs> and the day of death than the day of one's uh, birth. So, What's the point here? The point here is uh, the the, the uh, importance of a good name. A good name is better than precious ointment. So if you're going to choose a name for yourself, you better make damn sure it's good. It's a good name that describes, honestly describes you. And for now, I mean, yeah, you are a Ronin. You're, you're, but a, it's not good to be a Ronin. Okay? Because <laughs> you, you're going to and fro. You, you're, you're a person without a lord or a master. And I already showed you in the truth that you have masters. Uh, I want to look, um, yeah, to and fro. Let's get that. And you'll see that that's exactly what this guy is. Uh, the definition of Ronin should be on this script, uh, on this scripture. All right. Uh, let's start at. The 10th verse, Ephesians 4 and 10. I'm sorry, 4 and 11. And he gave, now this is talking about the ministry, right? And he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. And guess what? They become masters. They become masters. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the, the, the pastors, the teachers. Eventually, they become masters and they teach others. Okay? Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Yahweh Shai. There you go. You need a good master. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of the Heavenly Father, which is the master. <laughs> the master blaster. <laughs> it's lucky. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of the Heavenly Father, which is Yahweh Shai, which is the Master, all right, the Heavenly Master, unto a perfect, and remember, Master is just a title, okay, so don't get all bugged out over the word Master. That's the problem with, with a lot of us men, we're too emotional, man. Yeah, men deal, real men deal with facts, man. Facts over emotions, facts over feelings. Okay, doesn't matter how brutal or harsh the fact is, a fact is a fact. Okay, you can get all emotional you want about it, but if the fact is true, then guess what? It's a fact. Okay, and there's nothing you can do about it. You either accept it or you don't. Now, if, you, if you're if you wise, a fact, you'll accept it because it's the truth. It's a fact, right? Uh, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of the Heavenly Father unto a perfect man. There you go. Because we want to be just like Yahweh Shai. That's the goal of being in this truth. Unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Yahweh Shai. That now here, here, you, here you go, Ronan. <laughs> that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. And children are like that. 
Children have no stability. Watch children when they play. They're all over the place, man. We can't be like that. The, the scriptures say, in malice be ye children, but in understanding be ye what? Men. Okay? So you got to, you got to, plant down you got to root down man you got to stop moving here moving there you moving everywhere that's why you call yourself a ronin you have no lord you have no master that we henceforth be no more children and it's very important for you to have an earthly master don't be telling me oh i got a heavenly master no the heavenly master yahweh shai set you up with an earthly master how about that he set you up with an earthly master now who, who might that be huh that, he, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. That's, 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 that's our boy Ronan. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. See? So that is the importance of having a good master who's able to teach you how to be circumspect, how to be subtile. These are the things that Elder Pastor taught us, man. When we were coming up in the faith, he showed us about subtility and, 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 uh, and uh, you know, like case in point, I talk about it all the time. When he meant, when he, when Elder Pastor said, when you see a guy wear black a lot, that guy is negative because witches wear black. And when he said that, that was like so profound. I was like, oh shit, that's true. Witches do wear black. That's their favorite color. And it's true to this very day. And all those years ago, he said it. See, that's just one example of being under a good master, a good teacher, a good tutor. Scriptures speak about a tutor. Tutors are very important, man. You need tutors. You need masters. Okay, and I'm talking about earthly masters. Galatians 4 and 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. I remember when I first saw Elder Pastor teaching, I said, yeah, I can learn from this man. I can learn the truth from this man. And then as I got to know him, he had, he had a lot of qualities that I found, I found admirable. I'm, I'm telling you the truth, okay? He had a lot of qualities that I found admirable that I could incorporate in my life, okay? I'm just telling you all the truth, okay? Now, was I trying to be a clone of the man? No, I got my own spirit. I got my own way of thinking, okay? But the truth is the truth. That man, Elder Pastor, possess a lot of qualities that, that you can incorporate in your life that makes you a better person. That's just the truth, okay? And he's an exceptional teacher. He was back then and he still is now, okay? I'm just telling you the truth, all right? Sometimes you got to speak the truth, man. Not sometimes, really all the time, but there's sometimes you gotta be <laughs> there's sometimes you gotta be subtle with it. You know? That's the that's the beauty of, 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 of incorporating something called balance. You know, the secret to wisdom is balance. Okay? That's the secret to wisdom, balance. You got no one to speak and no one to shut up. Anyway, Galatians four and one. Now I say that the heir, and we're all heirs, right? We're heirs to the kingdom. We're joint heirs with Yahweh Shai as it is written, right? That the heir, as long as he is a child, that's when you first come in. You're a child, right? Differeth nothing from a servant. So if you're a servant, right, in this faith, if you're a servant, then you got to have a master. You get who you're serving. If you if you don't have a master, you ain't a servant. Because a, ma a servant serves his master. What is a ronin? A ronin, right? We looked up the definition. A ronin is a samurai. Samurai means servant without a, a lord or a master. <laughs> He's a ronin. So is that a good thing? No. No, it's not a good thing. He, This guy, Raphael Israel, he put the title of ronin because he probably saw the movie. He likes the energy of the word. He, li he likes the energy of the title. But did he really ever looked up that word? Did he ever really research that word? Chances are the answer is no. So you put that, that curse on him. You don't want to be a ronin, man. You want to have a lord and a master. Uh, you want to have a good teacher that can teach you. So you can teach others and you can be effective in the faith, man. So I, the first thing I would do is get rid of that title that you got there. Okay? That title ain't cool, man. Galatians 4 and 2. Let's read. It says, but is under tutors. Another word for tutor is a master. 
Okay, look it up. As a matter of fact, let's look look that word that Greek. Um, look up the word tuta in the Greek. Let's see what we discover. Strong's G, 2012. Epitrapas. Epitrapas. And it says, one to whose care or honor anything has been instructed. There's another word too that's in the scriptures. Instructors. We have instructors. A master is an instructor. He instructs you on how to behave, how to act. Okay? We learned a lot from, and I, I, the other brothers can attest to this, beginning with myself. We learned a lot from Elder Pastor. We certainly did. And I'm not trying to, uh, you know, gas the man up or, or put him on, a, on this lofty pedestal. I'm telling you the truth. Especially in this thing of ours, in this ministry. Okay? Um, one to whose care or honor anything has been instructed. A, a curator. A, a curator. A, cura, a curator. Or a guardian. Or as in a master. Okay, a guardian or as in a master, a steward or manager, another title for a master is a manager, okay, because he manages the affairs, a steward or manager of a household or of lands, an overseer, another title for a master is an overseer, one who has the care and tutelage of children. Now, when we first come in the troop, we're what? We're children. We read that in Galatians, the fourth chapter, either where the father is dead a guardian of minors or where the father is still alive. There you go. All right, the master. So you can't say that we don't have masters in this truth. Galatians 4 and 2, but is under tutors and governors, another title for master is a governor, until the time appointed of the father. There you go. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. So you best believe you got masters in this faith. You got masters in this in this truth. You young brothers that first come in when you join a camp and you're coming up through the ranks, you have masters. The ones that taught you, the ones that brought that, um, they didn't bring you in, but you came in and they presided over you. They're your masters. Okay, and you have to see them as such until you raise up to the rank of being a master. How about that? Okay, so your problem Raphael Israel, you want to be a Ronin. Obviously, you did not look up the word. You did not get the proper definition of the word. Because had you did, you wouldn't have called yourself a Ronin. That puts a that puts bad energy on you. Like a Elder Pastor said, you got to expel the demons off of you. Well, that's one demon you should expel. That title. Stop calling yourself a Ronin. Give yourself a Hebrew name, if you want. You can ask us and we'll give you an appropriate Hebrew name and call it a day, man. And stop your running about, you running here and you running there. Remember, you don't want to be a child tossed to and fro. Okay, we read this, Ephesians 4 and 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. There you go. And you got a lot of that in Israel. You got a lot of guys in Israel that are very cunning. Okay. There's an old saying, an old proverb. It says, a rolling stone gathers no moss. A rolling stone gathers no moss. You're like a rolling stone, my man. You're the rolling ronin. <laughs> you got to stop rolling, man. You got to be stable. Scripture speaks about being stable. Knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of our times. You know, stop being this ronin, man. Okay, so it's just a few words. Hopefully you found it edifying as well as the rest of you brothers out there. And so on to the next one.